So why do we do all this? Why do we do all this? What a waste of time. On a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to spend a Sunday. Uh, unless, unless something else, unless something else is actually happening, something we do not yet have a model for, unless something else is happening, what might that thing be? Well, I'm not going to drag it out longer than I already did, because I already dragged it out quite some time. What is that thing that's actually happening? It turns out that when I return out a little baby function from a bigger function, when I return that function out, I get more than just the function. When I return out that increment counter functionality and give it a new global label, my new function that I can then run with counter plus plus inside of it, I don't just get that function. Man, I get something else. I get a I get the live data from around that function when it was defined. I get that whole live data returned out on the back of the functionality formerly known as increment counter. On the back of it returns out that live data. We're going to add some caveats to this, but for now, with therefore counter is zero and increment counter is a function. I get all my live data out on the back of the function as I pass that function out into my new function. Out returns with it a backpack of the live data from when, from when this function was defined. When this function was defined, and we ran outer, and in we went, we created counter is zero, stored that live in memory. Not counter might be zero, but literally counter is now zero in memory. Increment counter is now a function stored in memory. When we returned out that increment counter, we brought with it all the live data from when that function was defined, all on the back of that increment counter function or functionality. So attached now to my new function is that backpack of live data on the back of the function. Meaning, median. What actually do you think is the process when I end up calling my new function the function with the backpack of data? What actually do you think is the process when I do that and I look inside and I hit the line counter plus plus? Where do I look first, median? Inside the backpack. Where do I look first? Oh, inside the log. Excellent. And where do I then look next, median, before global? Before global, you would look in the backpack. Into the backpack. These are the same thing, just copied and showing in two places. Into the backpack, where what do I find, Mijun? You find um, the counter variable, and you find its value of zero, so you can increment it. Two? One. To one. Fantastic. All right, we're going to talk so much more about how this works. But first, now I've finished running my new function, what happens to its local memory and to its execution context? Deleted, popped off, gone, this guy here is done. It's local execution context memory, let's return something out, it's done. But we're going to hit the call to my new function again. Let's do it, we're going to call my new function again. We popped it off the call stack, its data, unless we return something out, is deleted. As all function execution context data are when you finish running them. Okay, but we're going to hit it again. My new function is called again. Skyler, what happens? So you go into uh, what was before you can be counter. Yep, its execution context is created. Yep, and then you... Do you put anything in local memory? Uh, you increment counter. Right, so you hit that first line, counter plus plus. And where, Philip, do you look for counter first? You look in the local variable environment. You look in the local memory, the local variable environment. Folk, uh, variable environment is a posh name for that memory of data. It's the, in, it's the environment, meaning the things around you of available variables. Do you find counter? No. No, you didn't declare anything inside my new function. No counter. Now, where do you look next, Philip? You look in the backpack. Into the backpack of that data. And what do you find? 
counter. Which is? One. He stuck around. He stuck around, and what do you do to it? Increment it to two. To two. Our live data on the back of the function has stuck around, attached, and persistent to that function definition. Where is our local memory? Gone. Attached to the very definition of the function is a persistent store of live data. So that when I call my new function and don't find the, the variable I'm looking for in local memory, I don't go to global first. I go off to my backpack of live data attached to me. In other words, rather than going down straight away, rather than going down straight away, somehow in here appears my backpack of live data. And only then, after not finding it there, will I look out to global next. All right, but I think we can see this has profound consequences. My function now has data that can stick around between calls, between invocations. My function has a memory. It has a little store, a little cache associated with the definition of it, bundled up. This allows us to do profound things we're going to see in a minute. But first, thumbs. There are a ton of clarifications that can be asked on this. I'm going to bring some of them up, but I also want to see if folk can raise some interesting clarifications. You lost me. I'm clear. I have clarifications. Mijan has clarification. Z's clear. Skyler's clarification. Philip's clarification. Lewis is clear. Mijan, kick us off. So you mentioned that there's a backpack that gets returned out with the function, mm -hmm. um, with this internally defined function. Mm -hmm. And so, um, my question is whether that backpack comes into existence when the function is defined inside oh. the function, or whether it... it what a fantastic... On the return. Or, or what, what, return. What a fantastic question. What a fantastic question. Uh, Mijin, so look, here's how it works. The moment that increment counter function is defined, never forget that when I write, when, I, when JavaScript sees the word function increment counter, never forget that is literally, that's a command to JavaScript, to take that label, increment counter, and take its functionality and go store it in memory. Never think it's like a, I don't know what I used to think, they were just there. I never, they, they are grabbed and stored in memory, label plus definition. And at that moment, that's grabbed a bit of memory. At that moment, they also get a hidden property. A hidden property, which is a reference built into JavaScript, square bracket, square bracket, scope, square bracket, square bracket, which is a little hidden link to all the surrounding data from where that function was defined. So as soon as that function is defined, it gets a bond to all the surrounding local memory. At the moment of definition, Mijan, and it's stored in a hidden property. We can't, by the way, we cannot console log increment counter dot square bracket scope square bracket. Or, you know, increment counter console log it and see the screen. We can't do that. This is a hidden property. There's no console logging of it. It's a hidden property. But it is a bond at function definition to all the surrounding data. Meaning, when that function gets returned out, that bond persists. That returns the inner function. And with it, that bond, that hidden scope bond to the surrounding data is pulled out as well via that scope reference to the surrounding data. So it is just a link, a little bond to surrounding data, meaning when that function gets returned out, it's got to bring, it's got to pull that with the bond, pull it out with it. Does that answer the question, Medium? Yes. The implication of that would be that no matter where you call that function, inside of the outer function or in the global execution context, it's dealing with that same... That bond. That's where it goes and looks, yeah. So you could potentially call it once from inside outer and once from... Uh, it's, the, the always looking, it it's always looking down this route first. Yeah. But most of the time, we don't really notice it, right. right? Because normally, when you're calling a function inside of here, the, the call stack chain you're calling it in the same place you defined it, so you don't really make any distinction. It becomes interesting when I return the function out and the local memory would appear to have gone, right. but it's still held on to through that bond. And normally when I, when I finish running a function, anything that's not returned out is deleted. But now, JavaScript goes, oh, I've returned out a function and it's still got a bond, a reference to surrounding data. I better not delete any of that data, better store it in the backpack. Hypothetically though, if we were to call 
uh, increment counter right before you return it out of outer, and then you run my new function um, the first time in the global context, it would be seeing a counter, um, it would be seeing the value one in counter. Sure. And sure. then it would be incrementing sure. to that. It's all the same backpack. It okay. is the backpack of live data, absolutely. Got it. Excellent, great question, Mijin. Philip. Um, it's very similar to Mijin's, but uh, slightly different. Um, when the backpack is created and it's creating that link between the variables and the function, does it reference variables that aren't used in the function? So I guess like un Yeah, I mean, that bond is to that lo live local memory of data. So everything. Absolutely. But when I return that function out, suppose I define 100 variables inside of here. Mm -hmm. But I know exactly, I can only access the back, oh, let's be really clear. Once I get this function out and call it my new function, I can only access this backpack of data from inside of my new function. I can't do my new function dot scope counter. I can only access it by referring to something that's not in local memory and therefore going and looking in the backpack of live data. Otherwise, I can't access it. Well, that means that when I return that function out, increment counter into the global variable my new function whoosh, with the backpack of data I can know before I return out that function or as I return it out I can know exactly what things in my lo local memory or my backpack same thing I could ever return refer to Philip what's the only thing from my new function that I can refer to in my backpack counter counter so suppose I've defined a hundred different variables in here take up a ton of memory would they be in my backpack I mean according to our current rule yes we haven't said that. but JavaScript's engines are smart enough to think hold on I know exactly what's the only thing that can ever be referred to in the backpack and it's counter so only hold on to stuff in the backpack that could ever be referred to. Don't be re returning out all the, and at the point of returning out the function, JavaScript does an optimization and goes, let me just check what's in that, f oh, counter. Well, then everything else in this backpack, delete it. Only hold on to data that could ever be referred to from that function call. All right. Skylar, your clarification. Just answered it. Excellent. Well, I'm impressed that none of you have any interest in knowing what this backpack is technically called. Or maybe you just assume it is called the backpack. Because why not? What a useful... I think it's a good term for it. But we do not have the privilege of setting JavaScript's official terms for them. So instead we have to acknowledge at least their official terms. Now there's two I like. Not very catchy. Long. In fact, I, very long. One is, well first I want to tell you the meaning of the word lexical. Lexical means the positioning and ordering of where I am. So it's like the ordering uh, of things on the page and where they're defined. This here is known as a lexical scope reference because I've defined increment counter here inside of outer and therefore at its definition time I'm making a bond through this scope property to its surrounding local memory. It's called lexical scope reference because it's about where I position myself here inside of that local memory. It's where I position myself that determines where the bond is to. Lexical means like where I'm positioning myself in, in order, sort of word order almost. So I'm positioning myself here, I get a lexical scope reference well, when I return out that function into my new function, the function formerly known as increment counter, that lexical scope reference persists. So we can call it our, well, persistent lexical scope reference. Catchy. All right, another posh name for it is, we often call our local memory a variable environment the environment of available variables around you, the, the things around you, the variables around you. Well, some people say this variable environment is kind of closed over and returned out. When we return out the function, we close over the local memory, the local variable environment, and return it out in the backpack. So we can call it the closed over variable environment. And now do you see why I like the name? Backpack? <laughs> uh-huh. 